All right, guys, so we're taking a look at another 20 by 20 flight stack here. This is from Nidisi. So Nidisi has in the past been associated with a lot of iFlight branded um, parts. I'm not sure if this is an offshoot or some kind of uh, part that's related to an iFlight part. It doesn't seem to be. This might be uh, something that they're making on their own. It does seem to be of decent quality in terms of the way it's put together. It's not terrible looking. It's actually not bad looking at all. Um, but in terms of like how good these parts are, I have no idea. No way to know until you uh, fly it uh, 100 packs and do lots of crash testing, which obviously it takes a lot of time. And every crash is different, so it's really hard to say how durable these are going to be in any type of crash because you know, one crash it might be very minor. It doesn't seem like it does anything and it destroys everything. And then you have a really hard crash that doesn't do anything at all to these things. So uh, yeah, your mileage might vary. Uh, this is a new part. I have not experienced uh, this one yet. I will put this in a build eventually at some point because this is a, I think in terms of the in terms of price, it's in the budget range. I think with the coupons and everything on Amazon, it's probably going to run you about 60 bucks for this. Uh, it's a 35 amp, 20 by 20. Um, I think it's a BL Heli S 8 bit ESC, uh, 4 to 6 S for the ESC, and then the flight controller is an F4. Uh, it's got 6 UARTs, I believe. Uh, pretty loaded. I think it also goes up to 6 S. Micro USB for the cable. Take a look at the uh, ESC a little bit more detail here. So it's got a lot of capacitors there. It's saying that you don't need to use the included um, capacitor one of these uh, 220 microfarad 50 volt capacitors. You don't need this unless you're um, using a 5 or 6S battery. So if you're on 4S or lower, then the included capacitors are fine. You got a shunt there for a uh, current sensor, typical plug here that goes to the flight controller. Uh, let's see here, what's, what the, what's the orientation? Okay, motor one's over here. So this orientation should be like this. Get your plus and minus, get your holes for your capacitor, motor pads for the motor wires there. Pretty nice. It's not a super thick board. You can also solder to the side of the board here for the motor wires if you'd like to do that. Fairly close to the FETs. It uh, should be still workable if you're, uh, you know, average to decent skills in soldering. It should be fine. But yeah, it should be oriented like this. Motor one here, motor two here. Plug should be on the bottom like that. No, I don't see any conformer coating on this one, so you may want to add that yourself if you are going to be landing in any types of wet, wet grass, that kind of thing, just to give it a little bit extra protection, but they obviously opted not to do that for this one. So in addition to the capacitor, you get the rubber grommets. Uh, for mounting, you get some, uh, a little bit of heat shrink there for some of the wires, I think. I think that's for the capacitor which is nice, and you get an XT60 and an XT30 for your battery connection. And you get the uh, nice color diagram for the wiring and also your specifications. And there's the output for the plug there. It's also labeled on, uh, on the silk screen here, but you can see now it's in detail. So this is included as well. And by the way, you can buy the stack together like this or you can buy the parts separately. I'll list them all down in the video description. So when you look at the flight controller board, uh, the only thing it comes with here is the documentation uh, packaging, and then you get a whole bunch of these wiring looms because they have this flight controller. It has a lot of connectors and it has some extra rubber grommets there. So here's the flight controller itself. And then this come with extensive documentation on how to wire up everything here. Uh, it does have a plug for DJI and does come with the connectors for the DJI Air Unit and Vista, but be aware that there is no uh, voltage regulator for the output on the power for the DJI connectors. So if you're plugging this into an Air Unit, so here's here's the Vista here, you can do direct connection because it, Vista can handle up to 6S, but for an Air Unit, you're going to need to use a BEC and they're using a 12 volt uh, BEC here because a 6S voltage will fry an air unit. So be aware that it is direct. It's basically VBAT pass through going through that connector 
to either the Vista or the Arena. So if you're using an Arena, you need to, you do need to use a separate voltage regulator for that. So be aware of that. But yeah, they have wiring diagrams for various receivers and also how to configure them in Betaflight. So this is very iFlight typical. In fact, this looks exactly like a lot of iFlight documentation, but I don't, I don't see this particular part on the iFlight website. So this may be, um, a part that they're not using and they've just, uh, outsourced it to Nidisi. Um, not exactly sure. So your guess is as good as mine, but yeah, they have, you know, documentation here on how to plug in your GPS. They have an actual plug for the GPS. Also documentation on how to set that up. Pretty nice. So this is included. So uh, in terms of all the wiring and stuff should be fairly straightforward. All right. So let's look at the flight controller in a little bit uh, closer detail. You do have some soldering pads here available for some of the plug oriented stuff. If you don't like to use the plugs, so they have the UART here. I think UART two, we have the SD, SDL on the side here. So very tiny pads, VBAT camera control. I believe this one here is a DJI connector. This one over here is the connector goes to the ESC. So you can have one of the wires for the ESC. I believe this one's for your LEDs. Um, one of the, I think this one's GPS over here. I'm not sure where this one is. Yeah. Okay. So this one here is actually for D the DJI connector. And over here, this is actually for something else. So it is showing, you know, with the board oriented like, like this. You can see this is for DJI over here. And that one, it looks like it's, it's still, yeah, this is also you know, for the area as well. Yeah, so this one over here, so the orientation correct. This one here is going to be for, I think, all your receivers. And this one over here is going to be for GPS, I believe. Anyway, yeah, you can just refer to the documentation if you want to know exactly what everything is for. Looks like you have a black box chip there. It's one of the smaller ones. Get your Betaflight OSD here on the back and your MPU 6000 gyro on the bottom. Pretty nice layout. It's nice and compact. Um, again, you know, it does look like it's fairly well put together. I think that's a barometer as well there. So overall, you know, we'll see. I'll put this in something eventually. Uh, not sure when, but yeah, you know, it's a kind of a crapshoot as to know how well these flight controller stacks will perform in the long run because you can buy something that costs three times as much as this and they'll die in the first plug-in. So, um, you know, really, it kind of, it's a kind of, it really kind of depends on, uh, how you use it and how lucky or unlucky you get. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. This is a quick overview on this new stack. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.